big we have here we've got the berlin commission club tour which is a pretty cool article i saw here on Res advisor of pretty interesting news um the berlin club commission uh, to host the european club on the 30th anniversary of the fall of the wall which is a really interesting thing so the berlin club commission i think are the same commission that were instrumental in terms of you know maintaining and sustaining and kind of trying to help out some venues and trying to make sure they don't get knocked down and regeneration of some of the areas in berlin doesn't kind of push some of the legendary clubs out of the area because berlin unlike other cities recognizes the value these kind of nightlife spots kind of bring to their overall um a global appeal um how they contribute to the overall gdpr so they've kind of um, installed this berlin club commission in order to kind of you know make sure things are kind of uh, protected and held in a certain place and so far you see we've reached the rewards of it anyone has been to Berlin will know just how amazing the nightlife is, how many options that you have, the scope of it. It covers the majority of the city. It covers every area of the city and not just one area, like maybe the spots in London do. Just really intelligent and um, fair and really um, forward-thinking way, way of kind of, you know, dealing with the problem with nightlife and weighing up the pros and the cons and making sure all voices are heard when it comes to the conversation of regeneration. So this Berlin Cup Commission World Tour, um, sorry, European Club Night on the 5th anniversary is a good idea because I think it's probably again in loads of different promoters from all around the world to kind of celebrate, you know, the you know basically the fall of the Berlin Wall, which is an amazing concept in and of itself, actually. Um, so it says here, um, collective from over 27 countries will come to Berlin to participate in the Awareness Initiative on November 9th. So I'll say the following. I love that map, actually, with the, like in terms of the European Union, which probably might be a little bit of an ode or a little bit of an acknowledgement of U U the UK leaving the European Union and maybe kind of really trying to re-emphasize, you know, what kind of benefit, again, that free that freedom of movement within the European Union has allowed a lot of promoters, I think, on these shores to go and venture out, to seek new influence, to seek new inspiration. And also it's allowed people within the European Union to kind of see what we're doing on, on our side, right? Because I think that's, a, that's the thing that I've liked a lot I think London, I think we do a good thing of doing it, really. But sometimes we do that kind of really uh, heavy-handed kind of, you know, oh, Berlin like an egg, right? They've got a few of those in, in, in egg, which I, I don't want to call them out because, you know, they're a good club and they kind of do the best they can. They stay open quite late as well for that area. So, you know, they probably serve their local community. But I know they have those kind of Berlin club night kind of theme nights where, where they invite loads of Berlin people to come and play or people that just happen to be German or people that might have lived in Berlin a couple of months ago, right? But it's not... It's hard to kind of take that vibe and transplant it and kind of and put it in London. It's not that easy. But I think what Berlin do quite well or what a lot of European Union cities do quite well, when they hear somebody's blowing up in the UK... They'll just ask you to come across, right, and play what you play in the UK there. They want a bit of your kind of culture, a bit of your musical taste, a bit of your history, and they want to kind of use it in that space that they're using. They don't want you to kind of uh, conform to what they play, which I've always thought is quite um, impressive in that regard. Um, so this is probably a good way of doing it, right? Imagine all the different promoters from 27 different countries coming together and kind of, you know, um, in, in general kind of, you know, layering, sonically layering the tapestry of sound around this kind of building or this kind of club environment or open air it might be a really really good idea so the answer is the following um the goal of initiative which takes place on november 9th is to create awareness around the significance of a historic event the quote says today we take for granted the ability as europeans to travel and work and celebrate um together freely says a facebook event yet across the globe military conflicts continue whilst uh, repressed and marginalized groups are further limited by ingrained systems and Im immigration policies that stifle these communities freedom of movement the european club night gives the opportunity to come together next weekend collectives from 27 different countries around across europe sorry will come to berlin to celebrate uh, the parties in 27 local clubs and promoters among them poland's uh Jansa one crew will play greece Müller. lisbon zbd crew will play the akud Macht new and belgium's mikuzma crew will play at arcado another aim of the european club night is to inspire and build a long-term partnership and maintain regular artistic exchange to kick off the event the club commission will present a club culture manifesto in which the participant clubs commit to common values charter that's fucking cool man it, but it makes me really think maybe i should get back into club promoting again i mentioned it previously here like i've i used to do that quite often in the heyday of the you know the strip and the dawson scene and shortage and stuff but you know, over time, the clubs that I was doing it at one of one one or two, one by one, most of them closed. Some of them moved on from the stuff that I was doing and kind of seeked better 
representation of what they were trying to bring to the clubs. Maybe some of the bar managers were very cutthroat and kind of cut the OGs out and trying to introduce introduce more of a younger crowd because obviously bars and clubs only have a short shelf life in London. Uh, they need to be constantly reinventing themselves. So there was a lot of movement, a lot of upheaval. Then I moved across here to Stratford, which is, you know, way, way, way out of the kind of um, hip kind of, you know, culturally relevant bits of London like Shoreditch and East London and Dawson and stuff and maybe South London, Brixton, Peckham and all that stuff. I'm not really near any of those places. I don't really go out there on the weekends unless I'm going out to an event. So you kind of lose touch of what's happening, right? And I'm not my, my feet aren't on the ground anymore. Or my ear isn't to the ground anymore. So um but then uh, again in an effort to kind of build up my it was a kind of this is all on purpose. I wanted to kind of be able to live in a place like this where I don't have to pay that much rent considering you know if I lived a bit further in inward to the center I'd have to pay a bit more but then obviously I'd have the advantage of being able to be right on top of everything and you know be able to know when a club's opening be familiar with people network and all the stuff that kind of allowed me to get a club night back in the day would have worked better if I lived inwards but also I wanted to kind of be able to kind of harness or kind of develop my DJing skills right and I thought the best way to do it was to go and play in front of people that don't really need to be there because I in my experience again only looking for my experience I think I didn't grow that much as a DJ when I was in Dawson and Shoreditch I maybe grew a lot as a promoter understanding what it takes as an event organizer as just a person to network and stuff I probably grow a lot in that short period of five four years four to five years but I think as a DJ I've kind of grown but I've kind of grown more in the last two and a half playing in um, you know local bars and pubs than I ever done back there because like I mentioned no one wants to see no one wants me in these bars and pubs that I'm in there right no one's coming to see me play so I'm having to kind of balance the kind of not disturbing at night and also kind of showing off my musical range and showing off my ability to DJ so by and large it's been quite successful it's been quite good I, you know I get booked regularly to play mostly every month to go play in bars and pubs but there is that disconnect where I'm just not in the scene right so I can I can attend an event as a dj but i'm not really known as a promoter or as an organizer of parties which kind of doesn't help in terms of kind of furthering your ability to kind of dj in other places a bit, bit bigger nightclubs bigger festivals and i guess the only other way to do that is to just to do the conventional approach and just learn how to produce which is something that i might have to end up doing right if i'm not willing to put on a club night and to do that whole game again, especially nowadays where there's not as many options and spots to go to and have to be... The club that I've, I have to put on would be a lot more DIY than it was back in the day. A lot of the places that we use were quite ready-made, right? You just go and plug and play sort of stuff. But now you have to kind of seek out different spaces. Um, you might have to do the world unknown thing and gather a mailing list and email people out and sell tickets hand-to-hand, uh, install a sound system, get your own security, hire bar staff. You might have to be a bit more in, uh, in, 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 ingenious, in, in, ingenuitive, whatever that word is called, innovative, whatever that word is, um, in your approach to kind of putting on an event. Because um, obviously punters nowadays expect more, unfortunately. Um, you can't really you can't really expect a kid that goes to print works every other weekend to kind of you know just come up to your local night in a bar somewhere in Dawson and have you know and think it's anything special especially if the DJs aren't that great you need to have like a space to go to that's a bit out of the that's a bit far away maybe secret code words and shit um, that really is going to help with everything but again if I'm not willing to do that I just have to produce simple as that I produce make some good tunes put them out send them out to maybe uh, send out demos and it hope like a big DJ plays it and then through that kind of way someone recognizes your song it blows up and then you become the big DJ person which again it's not easy either right both options are very um, low probability of success but those are the only ways to kind of really kind of really um, speed up the process of becoming like a a, res, a kind of a full-time DJ right essentially that that will speed up the approach of it because if you want to be a full-time DJ and have that as your career you have to produce a song that someone knows or you have to be well known as a DJ enough that people want to book you to play places which again is a, the probably the harder route to go down because you know it's just it's the one that everyone can do isn't it? it's the lowest form of entry in it um, everyone can DJ but not everyone can produce and not everyone can put on an event so that's when it kind of you know everyone starts to fall off in those kind of two little strands of trying to those two little routes but yeah those are some things I'm, those are the things I'm thinking of at the moment mulling, mulling over decisions I have to make in the next couple of months maybe as well to kind of figure out why I want to take it especially with the next with the end of the year approaching I want to make sure every year I'm developing every year I'm evolving and I'm trying to really push myself in order to kind of make sure that I'm actually my potential in it I think I have a voice I think I have something to say I think I have an interesting approach I think it'd be quite cool to see someone like me at you know at a flipping you know oval space or somewhere 
or like an X or Y behind the decks. I think, you know, that'd be quite cool for the punters to see someone like me. Um, I think I would bring something different to the space um, and also to the scene in general. So I can only do myself justice by making sure that I'm pushing myself and making sure that I'm doing as much as I can to get to those kind of places. Fingers crossed. But yeah, um, I recommend you check it out. Uh, Berlin Cup Commission, 9th of November. If you're in Berlin, um, it's going to start 9th of November. Oh yeah, basically all all at the same time, which is fucking sick. It reminds me of that. What's that festival they used to have in Dawson where you used to go to different, it's like a festival that was held in different clubs. Um, that was really cool. I think it was like a punk night thing. I forgot what, what the name of it was. Different club nights will host different bands and you just play all the day, all the way through. I think it might have just been all on the strip, so you have to jump from place to place to place. That was a pretty cool idea. But yeah, I recommend you check it out. Um, loads of interesting nights on there. Loads of really cool venues that are taking part. And again, just a good opportunity for you to kind of uh, celebrate um, the beauty that is nightlife, innit? Because there is nothing really that comes close to it, really, innit? No, I don't think dates... I think some people are different. Some people would say they prefer open air parties to night to night like nightlife but i love nightlife man there's nothing i love more than getting ready the night of of, a, of an event uh you know uh, having some pre-drinks recording something or doing a little bit of a mix at home to get you in the mood and then going to the event nowadays i try to like not play music when i go to parties i just want to my, my ears to kind of be cleansed so the whole journey i kind of have no headphones in and as soon as you get in it's like do 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 or when you're approaching you're walking down the street approaching the club you're about to go to it's just oh, there's nothing nothing really comes close to it man so yeah recommend you check that out the berlin club commission um the european club night on the 30th anniversary of the fall of the berlin war 9th of november I'll put the link in the show notes if you want to check 